Okay, continuing on. Strength in the flesh contrasted with God's power perfected in weakness. It's interesting that the genealogy of Adam begins to be recounted in Genesis 4, and this is recapulated in Genesis 5. It's almost as if the vain speaking of Lamech, boasting of his strength, is in contrast to the calling upon the name of, the, the name of God that begins with the third generation in the line of life, uh, Enos, which means weakness or mortality. Genesis 4, 23-26. And Lamech said to his wives, Adah and Zillah, Hear my voice, you wives of Lamech. Hearken to my speech, for I have slain a man to my wounding and a young man to my hurt. If Cain shall be avenged sevenfold, truly Lamech seventy and sevenfold. And Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God said she, for, uh, excuse me, and, and called his name Seth. For God, said she, has appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. And to Seth, to him also there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Now Adam knew his wife again. Now we're re resorting back to Adam and we're going back to the beginning time-wise. And she called his name Seth, for God, he said, has appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Now the line of life comes out of Seth, who is the second born. <laughs> I see where this is going. And there's this principle all the way through the scriptures. We'll see it several times that the second born seems to usurp the place of the firstborn. And the firstborn gets offended at that too. Cain is offended. He was the first. Yeah. So, yeah. He, okay. Cain was offended and he was the first. Ishmael was offended and he was the first. Esau was offended. Um, he should have... He should have had the blessing. He came out first and Jacob was holding his heel. So God has a way of preferring the last to be first, right? Satan was first, but then God created man. He uses this to choose the things that the world despises, to humble the mighty and proud by choosing the second born. This violates the principles of honor that are ingrained in the flesh, the desire for vainglory. God is not going to satisfy that. Amen. Abel was replaced by Seth, and to Seth was born a son whom he called Enos. The name Enos means mortal, while Seth means appointed, and Adam means man. By calling on the name of God, they acknowledge their mortality, which is uh, con uh, con uh, con consciousness of weakness and frailty and the realization that our existence is fleeting like a vapor. The only eternal thing is God himself. Amen. Cain's descendants spoke harshly against God using religious speeches to attack his character and diminish the prop propitiation. They also ridiculed God's people, calling them lazy and boasting <laughs> that they were the true workers who would be avenged if anyone killed them, even 70 times sevenfold, Jude one eleven. Perhaps Lamech even believed that God would support him in his vain and boastful speeches, Genesis 4.23-24. This behavior is similar to that of false prophets discussed by Jude and Peter in the end days who followed the way of Cain and are known for their uh, grandiose, grandiose and vain speeches. Jude 1, 16, 2 Peter 2, 18. In contrast, the names in this line represent truth about their state. We don't see the bitterness and the zeal in the line of of, of Genesis 5, which 
some call the line of life. They're not bitter, they just confess the reality of their estate. The first three names, Adam, meaning man, Seth, meaning appointed, and Enos, meaning uh, mean mortal sorrow, state simply, man is appointed mortal sorrow. This is just the reality of the human condition. Mortal sorrow speaks of sorrow in a state of weakness and death. What is a man to do? They started calling on God. Hmm. Amen. Beautiful. The first activity recorded related to Seth's line is calling on the name of the Lord, which is significant. When the early church called on Jesus, they were referred to as Jesus callers. Acts 9, 14. Knowing God's name is special and calling on it means you're asking him to embody whatever the name represents. He can be your salvation, your healer, Jehovah Rapha, your provider, Jehovah Jireh, and much more. Exodus 15, 26 and Genesis twenty two fourteen, 14, calling on one of his names, uh, excuse me, uh, acknowledges that he is the source of whatever the name represents, and it requires you to rely on him to fulfill that role. Psalm 27 and 8. Hmm. Amen. This differs from the belief that one can construct a world system to provide for oneself. Like an orphan trying to survive on their own. In this age, true spirituality is characterized by a sense of weakness. We've discussed this concept on this channel before. We have a treasure in our earthen vessel. And our spirituality is glorious in the New Testament because an eternal weight of glory is being developed within us. Which will be revealed in the next age. However, in this age... We're surrounded by weakness and we're in a state of weakness. God uses our weakness to encourage us to call on his name and prevent us from constructing something within ourselves. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 18 and Romans 8, 18 through 25. Amen. As Christians, we know that the power of Christ presides over us in our weakness and his grace is perfected in our weakness. Amen. Our weakness prompts us to call on the call on the Lord. In contrast, Cain's weakness and rejection caused him to build up his own strength. This is the difference between Cain and his son Enoch. Cain's line is dedicated to the dragon and builds up a city constructing a world empire in his strength. Enoch, on the other hand, calls upon the name of the Lord in his weakness. One line represents the strength of the flesh, while the other represents weakness. Cain's line represents the strength of the flesh, while Enos, who was, or excuse me, and who, uh, while Enos, who comes from Seth's line, represents the weakness of the flesh, but the strength of the spirit. God's power is manifested in weakness, and He is not focused on vindicating individuals in this world. In the record of Cain's line, there is no passage of time. However, in Seth's line, time is recorded meticulously. After so many years, this one begat that one because God is marking their time as it is significant for the forwarding of his purpose. Even though Cain's line may seem more glorious, they will perish. This is true of the religious Cain as well. They hate you because they don't want you to know grace or how to call on the name of the Lord in the midst of your weakness. Religious canes always tell you, you can do it. <laughs> tell me that does not remind you of, um, uh, oh, what's that movie? Um, Waterboy. You can do it. <laughs> Sorry. Um. And what you can do it and want you to rely on the flesh. Their purpose is to put a stumbling block in front of you. Amen. They don't understand the language of weakness. When we say, I'm weak, but I call on the name of Jesus and he becomes my strength. They say, you're just carnal and in, and un, and in unbelief. <laughs> How ironic. Um, 
you don't believe that God said you can do it, why would you or why would he give you the law if he didn't think you could keep it? Oh my gosh, I remember that one too. Ugh, some of these sayings are just so pathetic if you really think about it when you put it against the word of God. It's like, really? <laughs> anyway, moving on. Maybe we're not under the law of Moses, but we're under the commands of Jesus. We can keep those. They give lip service. It's by the Holy Spirit's help. But anyone who doesn't understand this principle that Christ has to be everything is not on the way of life. Amen. They are in the way of Cain, and it'll show up in their religious service. Doesn't mean they're not saved. It just means they're not clear, and they're doing a lot of damage while they're not clear. What they're building is wood, hay, and stubble, and it's going to be burned. Amen. And just so you know, I wasn't saying that they weren't saved either. I was saying that, you know, we can all get an unbelief sometimes because... Um, we're relying on ourselves rather than uh, Christ himself as our life-giving spirit. So therefore, we're in unbelief and we cannot please God if we are not in faith. You know, uh, what is what's that verse that talks about uh, without faith is impossible to please God? So yeah, it's a, it's a form of unbelief. If you're trying to do it in your own strength and everything, you're thinking that God can't help you and that uh, you have to do it all. So you're in 100% unbelief, not from salvation, but from allowing God to work in your life. Okay, moving on. Seth's line may build, but what they construct is unlikely to earn anything other than mockery from the world. 1 Corinthians 3, 12 through 15. The, the accumulation of the line of life is the building of the ark, a representation of Christ and the church. Genesis 6. 14 16 and 1 Peter 2 4 through 6. Today, building the church happens in weakness by those who call upon the name of the Lord in their weakness, and he becomes their building material. 2 Corinthians 4 7 through 18. To build with gold, silver, and precious stones means recognizing that we are weak in the flesh and calling on the name of the Lord in truth. 1 Corinthians 3 um, 3. 12 through 15, we cry out to him in desperation and he answers the call, building something within us, 2 Corinthians 4, 7 through 18. Christ begins to make his home in our hearts and we start to become solid, but in a different way. We do not become solid in ourselves or grow in self-confidence. Instead, we grow in confidence in Christ with a full assurance of faith and a perfected. Uh, a perfected conscience, Hebrews 10, 22. Amen. We learn to abide in his presence and walk with him as Enoch walked with God, Genesis 5, 22 through 24. This is the key to escaping judgment, calling on the name of the Lord, believing in the blood, trusting in his promise of the seed and walking with God in a state of awareness of our weakness, but confidence in his strength, Hebrews 11, 7. This is what ultimately builds the ark. Genesis 6, 14 through 16. 1 Peter 2, 4 through 6. Amen. So there is a building on our line. It's just not a work of hands, really, and is definitely not from our zeal. It's from our place of weakness. Amen. <laughs>